In this third part of the series, I will explain two-way ANOVA, multi-way ANOVA, and interaction. So far, we have discussed ANOVA as a model for a continuous outcome variable and a categorical explanatory variable. However, ANOVA can be used with any number of explanatory variables. When there are exactly two explanatory variables, it is sometimes called two-way ANOVA. For any larger number, it is called multi-way ANOVA. As an example of two-way ANOVA, let's continue with the blood pressure data from part one and two. In this example, we wanted to compare the average systolic blood pressure of hypertension patients undergoing either of three treatments. But what if we also wanted to know whether the blood pressure differed between males and females? A two-way ANOVA can estimate both of these effects simultaneously. In R, this is very easy to do, simply by using a plus sign after the first explanatory variable and then adding the second explanatory variable. What's even greater is that the visual diagnostics work exactly the same as shown before. If we produce a summary of our fitted model, we now see two F-tests, one for the effect of treatment and one for the effect of sex. In this case, there is a significant difference in the group means of treatment, but males and females do not differ significantly. There are different ways to calculate these sums of squares, but that is beyond the scope of this lecture. The post hoc now also shows two tabs one for the difference in treatments, and one for the differences in sex. The same goes for the plot function, which will now return two plots. If in the omnibus test you see that one variable's effect is not significant, you can produce a post hoc of only one variable at a time, using the which argument. So what about more than two explanatory variables? Consider an experiment on the yield of crops. We want to know whether adding nitrogen, Phosphate or potassium affects the yield of the crops. This works exactly the same, just by adding another plus sign and then the third variable. The omnibus test will then have three F tests. The post hoc will also contain three tabs. This estimates whether there's a difference in the average yield when adding nitrogen, yes or no, phosphate, yes or no, and potassium, yes or no. Now you might wonder what about the effect of combinations of groups? Perhaps adding nitrogen doesn't do anything unless you also add phosphate. This is what interactions are. Namely, is there an effect of the combination of N and P that cannot be explained by their separate effects alone? You can add an interaction by including both N, P, and N colon P in the model. The shorthand notation for this is N times P. If you include an interaction, then the post hoc will contain a new tab that includes the effects of combinations of N and P. So the first row shows the differences between adding nitrogen or nothing. The second row shows the difference between adding phosphate or nothing. The third row shows the difference between adding both or nothing, etc. So each combination is compared. Of course, you can also add more than one such combination. Here's how to compare all combinations of two. Adding interactions to your model requires that the variables that are part of the interaction are also in the model. In other words, you cannot exclude n, p, or k from the model if you want to compare their combinations. I explain this concept in greater depth in the model selection lecture. Finally then, what about all combinations of categories? This is called factorial ANOVA, and it can be done as shown here. The post hoc now contains a comparison of all combinations of n, p, and k. So the first row compares adding nitrogen to adding nothing, the second compares adding phosphate to adding nothing, the third one compares adding nitrogen and phosphate to adding nothing, and so on. Every combination is compared. Since this involves so many comparisons, the multiple testing correction causes almost all p-values to be one or close to one. This means that in this particular example, we have very little evidence that combinations of all three are different. In case it isn't quite clear yet, here's a visual representation of what it means for there to be an interaction. On the left we see that there is a clear difference between the red and blue group for those in category A, but not for those in category B. In other words, there is a difference in differences, and that is what interaction means in the context of ANOVA. On the right we don't see this at all. A is on average lower than B, blue is on average lower than red, but the difference between the categories is the same in either category of the other variable. In other words, there is an overall effect of being A or B and of being red or blue. These overall effects are usually called main effects. In summary, 
we have the one-way ANOVA to compare the means of all categories of a single variable, two-way ANOVA to compare the categories of two categorical variables, and multi-way ANOVA to compare the categories of any number of categorical variables. For two-way and multi-way, if you believe combinations of categories to be different, you should include an interaction. And that concludes all for part three of this series.